Welcome back to Sun Ra Artist Homestead. My name is Syra. Today we're cruising through the gardens, gonna be doing quite a substantial harvest. It's mid-September, beautiful day. The Asian pears are ready, autumn raspberries, beans, beets, celery, carrots, onions, melons, lots more as well. I'm gonna share with you some tips and growing ideas along the way, a little update on the Hulu Culture Terrace development. So stick around and celebrate the autumn harvest. First off to harvest are the Shenshiki Asian pears. I absolutely love this variety. The skins are golden and thin. They're crispy and sweet. They do get even sweeter, however, if you leave them longer into the autumn with the nighttime cool temperatures. I'm going ahead and harvesting all of these now. They are just ripe enough because I have a rodent problem. So it's been a bit of a battle. And unlike other pears that will continue to ripen once they are picked, Asian pears actually need to stay on the tree until they are ripe. So this tree has been growing for five years now and has been producing for four of the years. So really quick turnaround. They tend to get quite the load on the branches. So I do have some stakes here. Look how weighted down that branch is. Let's see the rodents. Been chewing those off. Aha. So you're a squirrel. I'm kind of glad you're a squirrel and not a rat. I set a trap under the tree, but it tripped it. Eat the food. Hey, Shh. no, no, no. You gotta, <laughs> he's just like, whatever. I'm eating these fruits. You already got some. You can have the ones that fall on the ground. <laughs> it's nice when there isn't quite so many on the tree because they do get a little bit larger. Pretty nice harvest for one tree there. Some really good sized ones in here. So I always like to have plants growing underneath my trees, guilds, so to speak. Some are different than others. This one, I have a lot of just volunteers. This was kale planted last year. It's nasturtiums just come back every year. I have self-seeded carrots under here this year. It's pretty sweet. The zinnias and volunteer sunflowers. That's a pretty interesting one. I also like to, you know, build up my soil under my trees each and every year by adding some compost. I just randomly throw stuff under my trees to build it up. A little bit later on, I will come and chop and drop everything as well as other plant matter from various areas and just build that up under my tree. And then once in a while, I'll, you know, throw wood chips over top. Uh, so just trying to each and every year keep growing the soil underneath my trees. Got a celery here that's been harvested. And some of these I cut early enough that they're actually growing back. Looks like we'll get a little bit of a second crop there. Volunteer carrots still all throughout there and under the Asian pear. Have some leeks here. So we're gonna harvest this beautiful carrot bed right here. I would typically leave these a bit longer to sweeten up a little bit more, but they're pretty good and the rodents are a problem. So just harvest this whole bed right now. So what I like 
like to do with my carrots is um, you know, use a tarp for germination. Also, I like putting these boards in between my rows. It really keeps the uh, weeds out and the moisture in. Also keeps my cat off of the bed. Last year, I overwintered a lot of my carrots and I ended up leaving a bunch of them too long into the spring. And when they start growing their green tops again, they get too woody. So if do overwinter carrots, they will last right through the winter. Um, but you do want to get them before they start regrowing their tops. Generally, the larger the produce is too, the better it tends to keep. Like the smaller carrots won't really keep as long. Definitely some nice ones down on this end. A little bit more sunny over here. Of course, some of the large ones are the ones that, you know, the mice have been chomping on. <laughs> Tops. All right, just gonna snap off all the tops now and load this bin up. probably get all these volunteers out as well. Those are pretty good. Pile of volunteer carrots. There's lots more, but that's all I'm gonna dig for now. Only a small pile of rodent eaten ones. I could salvage the bottom, but it's not as many as I thought it might be. All right, that's a carrot harvest for this area here. So I'm gonna be cruising kind of in circular forms as we go here, just harvesting along the way. Have a bean and squash tower right there. These are evening primrose, pretty cool. Have some climbing zucchini. Ooh, two more babies up here. Three. Three tools that are really valuable in the garden. A few of these flowers keep coming up. So gorgeous. So I'll do another little pepper harvest in here. I'll show you last week's harvest out of here as well. Got a lot of peppers in three gallon pots here, just right up off the ground. And so they're isolated from the slugs and they do really well in this size container for me. Have some matchstick peppers that I harvested a ton off of already. Lacto fermented hot sauce is still fermenting as we speak. Bottoms of the containers cut out and sunken into the ground. So, yeah, this is my first time growing sweet potatoes. Wow, didn't think there was too many more peppers in here, but there are. Sometimes they pull off without scissors, other times they don't. Cucumber boxes are thoroughly done. Yeah, I'm not too thrilled about this variety actually. Rosarian red, I think it is. Ooh, there's some beauties in here. Just draining off. It does splash the foliage a little bit. It's not always the best, but it does work well just to water. Let's see the harvest out of here for today. Still quite a few more peppers in here. Have a few melons in here. There's one nice one. That'll make it. Circle around through the food forest area here. Do a real quick tour. Just kind of a walk through. Got the lima beans here. And they actually got killed off by mites. Kind of sad. And last week I just saw that the uh, rats have been eating my really nice uh, beets right here. Below we've got some beautiful looking beets. Oh, nice. Speaking of rats, look at that. Oh, uh, I kept setting traps in here and I've gotten a few. Oh my gosh. Oh my. No. Oh, it's way worse than I thought. Well, I want to harvest these then. I'm pulling these. 
Uh, I'd say at least half. Raspberry canes coming up here. Pickling cube trellis. There's a couple of okay ones on there still. Echinacea. I want to dig some of these roots. They are three or four years old now, so good time to start making some echinacea tincture. The Flemish Beauty pear, just a few nice fruits on her this year. She's struggling with uh, the scab pretty bad here. A lot of these fruits down lower aren't any good. A new ambrosia apple tree here. So it's a Hugel culture pit. Birds are loving the sunflowers and the bees. These are all volunteers in here. Trellis of San Marzano tomatoes. Let's pick all these right now. Even the ones that aren't fully ripe. You can see the rodents have been going to town on the tomatoes. So gorgeous. I love their shaping. I'll even pick them like that when there's a lot on the trellis, uh, just so that new ones have a chance to ripen quicker, actually. Have some cukes here as well. They are still producing so many cukes this year. I guess I should harvest these, otherwise they're just gonna go over over mature like that, a little shut down cucumber plant. So that's why you do want to keep cucumbers picked. A couple beds onions here, started harvesting out of one bed, almost halfway so far, just using them gradually. All the necks are kinked over, so they are finished. Not the largest crop this year, but some decent ones there. All red varieties right here. Row of cabbage, there's just a couple left. So in general, I always like to leave the roots of plants in the ground. This will really help build the fertility of your soil. You know, you pull out one of these in the spring and often there'll be clusters of worms on it. Inferno, the really dark red ones. Really love this variety. There we go, that is the harvest. All three quarters of the harvest in this area for the onions. These ones are a bit smaller. Not bad though, There's still some decent ones in there. Missed a couple here, beauties. So I need to find a place uh, to either hang these or put them on some screen racks and cure them for a couple weeks so that the, uh, the necks um, you know, shrivel up and close. Actually quite a few beans still to pick here. Cabbage, oh, that one's splitting too. Looks like we'll get one. So this is a fun experiment. I knew it was pushing it for uh, for time. Look, they would have had a longer summer. They would produce more. There's a bunch of little babies there. Ah, some more cute numbers in here. Lots of beans. I'm saving some for seed now, but still another good picking on here. 
starting to get some mites for sure. It's so dry out. Have this bin of Japanese sweet potatoes here. Bear bear. Hey buddy. So going you looking for corn snacks? Corn is done for a while now. Pick some of this kale. Some zucchinis here. It's late. So I have some heart of gold melons growing in two wicking barrels here, or self-watering barrels. And I actually got some melons here. I was concerned that I planted them out a bit too late, but it is protected right here. And they have a nice southern face. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna actually get some melons, even though those were planted so late. over 25 inches. That is a record for me. bean plants in here that I'm growing out for seed. That is nicely ready. It's growing up the nectarine a little bit here. So one of my red hot pokers actually bloomed this year. I started a few of these last year from seed and just the one has bloomed this year. They're gorgeous. That's a good start, good dent in the harvest so far, all of the onions as well. The sun has gone down now, so I'm gonna continue this tour and harvest tomorrow morning. Good morning, time to pick some raspberries. I'm just getting ready to uh, put up some boards on the uh, soffit and fascia area there. Finally get into that. Check out these amazing raspberries. Look at them all. So this variety of raspberry will bear two crops, um, a good size one in summer and then a smaller autumn one. What I like to do with some of the double bearing raspberry varieties is just cut them all off in the autumn. That way they'll just produce one larger crop the following autumn. So just get a couple of these in the autumn, which is really nice. The best for fresh eating. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some water on these so they keep coming. Put a hefty top dressing of aged manure on these midsummer, so they really produced for me. I love this little corner. A morning glory comes back every year, planted about four years ago, and ever since, a couple of them just come back on their own. All right, what is next? Some eggplants over here. Just a few other onions. They'll be okay in the sun uh, just for today. They're gonna dry out a bit. That's how you do it one handed. All right, nice little eggplant harvest. That's a bonus. A new shelling bean variety here, growing in this crescent fence line. So excited to find some new bean varieties that are good ones. So it looks like they will mature in time, so that's one of the first things I look for. Tons of dill seed to harvest as well. I think I'm gonna leave that for now. All right, what else we got here? Some beautiful flowers, always. Strawberry hydrangea color, almost all the white is faded now. Oh, the goji berries. There are some. Yahoo, so that's exciting. It's the first time. And the bees, the bees are finding the flowers and there's honeybees this autumn here, which is wonderful. We'll definitely get some berries this year. Little green ones there, lots more flowers. Hopefully a bunch more come in. I know I'll get some. So that's pretty sweet. I've been waiting on these guys. This is their 
fourth year here. Still getting some tomatillos here. Still on their way to maturing. It looks like there's a bunch on the ground I could collect. I think there's a few more beans in here as well too. This is supposed to be an early variety. Look at this beautiful. And I can tell they're gonna start to crack while they have just that first layer. So that is a sign to go ahead and cut these now before the next rain comes because they will split right open with the next rain. So this was its first growth and it made three small heads. <laughs> That's kind of fun. probably some of the nicest cabbages have grown. I mean they're not huge but you know this variety is quick maturing. Mind you they have taken a, quite a while this year but the weight on that balls in the ground um, this way also if one wants to come back if it overwinters then I will have seed so. Zip. lettuce seed popping through Ooh, container choice I started this late January and it's been growing all summer and that's how much it grew. Sometimes onions just do not grow. <laughs> it's like months of growth. There's some nicer ones down this way, but still nothing compared to what I had last year for the Kelsey. It was a bumper crop last year. There's a few nice ones down here. That's a more reasonable size, but in general this this variety will get double the size. That's what I grew last year. I started all my onions from seed the last five years or so now, I think. I might try some sets again just for the ease. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do a bed next year of some sets. Main reason I don't like using sets um, like from the store is that, you know, they're full of, uh, you know, fungicide, pesticide potentially nutrient profile potentially. I mean, I gave them fertilizer too. So, you know, there's a number of factors. Onions are a little bit finicky sometimes. They like the cool weather, consistent water. And uh, they did have thrips as well. So that could have just stopped them from growing. But uh, yeah, still got a nice little crop here. Oh, there's some nice ones in here. Yeah, some decent ones there. I just noticed this particular squash here. That's sweet. That's an extra one I didn't know about. Some beauties in here. One's coming from under the cherry tree there. Just dumped some compost and planted her in it came out to the light here. Some new beets, transplants. 
think some of them will mature into small beets in time. A few squash have made it up on top of my blueberries and trying to keep them off this year. Oh, a couple of fruits there. Beautiful zinnias along here. Cherry tomatoes in here, just growing on the blueberries. That's always fun. Look at these clusters in here. <laughs> Comfrey poking through. Mmm. Volunteering nasturtiums. Whole nice bed of potatoes in here, super mulched. I actually have some strawberries in there too. Uh, in the spring, a whole bunch of tulips come up. I've got hybrid squash. All the runners pulled through the potato bed here. They're just planted in between my blueberries. Some gorgeous ones here. Oh, there's that princep tomato. Oh, wow. There's some ripe ones down here. Awesome. So these look like they are true to the variety. They have that little point on the bottom, which is kind of like a little Roma. Really great for drying because they're more meaty. So I'll be saving some seed from this plant here. It's growing up, yeah, all the way there. So this was a volunteer. That's perfect because I did run out of this seed and now I will have my own. So I'll save some of that. Look at the carrots, carrot seed in here. So I'll get some volunteer carrots in here as well next year. My wicking barrels here. Worked out pretty awesome. Check these beautifuls out. It's a butterbush squash. They're almost mature. Look at these buddies. It's a smaller fruiting variety, but I just absolutely love them. Some of them get decent size. I love the long necks on them. Such small seed pockets. It's just in the bottom there, and this is all solid. So really great. More Avalon hybrids down here. What do you say, Jeannie? Hey. <laughs> yeah. Bean tower here. This is dull off. Another new variety I'm trying, shelling brown bean. Some sage plants here. The other wicking barrel or self-watering barrel. They're tanning up. They're almost done. But I'll just let them go longer just to kind of cure. And we have some spaghetti squash here. I'm gonna cut these ones right now because they've pretty much died off from some mildew. stems start going cork-like, it means they're finishing up. They really uh, produced quickly, the spaghettis. All right, so the melons. So it didn't work out quite like I was hoping. I planted watermelons in here pretty early and uh, some of them died off, got a cold snap, and it looks like I don't see any watermelons, just the replanting of the cantaloupe varieties. And just a couple. Oh, that one is ripe. Okay, good. It's soft. We're gonna get to try one of these now. And another little tower here. These ones actually did okay. We got too cold of a night um, a couple of weeks ago and they started dying off ever since. So melons are super um, sensitive to cool temperatures. A few on here. I wasn't expecting too much, but uh, yeah, it's all right. Just get a taste of this year. Did you pick that melon? Is that the first ripe melon? <laughs> Pretty tasty, huh? Looks like you eat quite a bit already. Yeah, hey, yeah. Ooh, nice and juicy. Not bad for a mini melon. Tastes like a good cantaloupe. There's just not a whole lot of flesh there. You want a piece of melon? 
All right, next is some candy roaster squash. It's a new variety for me. Got some baskets here. Potatoes, cabbage, kale, carrots, late planted tomatoes, some red acre cabbages. One has split, so I need to harvest those. Check these beauties out. these these are legend so should be real sweet I mean, the name says it candy roaster exciting so not the largest uh, producers at least for me this year the first time I'm growing them averaged pretty much one a plant I have seven plants here and seven fruits I try to leave as much um, stem on as I can for storage. I planted these other cabbages up here very late and they were kind of just scragglers left over. So I'm really quite surprised that they actually headed up and did something. I'm really amazed. They got enough water and mulch um, so that growing conditions were ideal for them. And so they kind of came back around and actually produced something. Let's get this one too. Nice, no aphids yet. So pick some of this kale. some beans up here new bush beans autumn bush beans just cropping out haven't picked any yet look at them all this whole row here this is a really nice really thin french filet type bean i'm still picking one spot tons unreal this is gonna take hours <laughs> Just so many, so, so many. I'm just kind of pulling them wherever. I like to uh, leave the, the little stem bit there when I can, if I'm gonna process them quickly, just cause it's less, one less step to do in the kitchen. Plant came off. That's another way to uh, harvest, to just pull the whole plant. And I've got this whole row here to do, just on this side. Well, I've picked only about a third. Let's move on up to the celery. Oh, cabbage. Thank you, beautiful. Boom. All right, the celery. I've got two beds here. I've been harvesting out of here a little bit. Some edibles, but just starting to get aphids a little bit now and going to flower more. These are tender long. I think they're like 80 days. They get a bit larger, but they're generally nice and thin and really long. So that's not bad. They're not gonna get to their full potential, I don't think, but well, if we keep having some nice weather. Hey, oh yeah. Ooh, the basil is looking good up here still. For outside this time of year, that's pretty darn amazing. Usually it's just all fried. Lots of cherries here need to be picked. Volunteer potatoes in here as well. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go and get my scythe and just mow it all down and then sort it. This 
is where this tool is really useful, really nice and quick. I'm cutting all my celery above the root ball just because I need to sort it. Celery will grow back if there's enough growing time. Some of it's looking decent. I never did get to putting any rubber bands on my celery or collars. Next year, I want to grow some celery in a wicking bed. Not as high as those barrels, but something more shallow. I think they do really well, kind of isolated from the slugs, but have that steady water. Put some collars on them. I'm still working on my celery crop. Yeah, there's some nice stuff here. It's good too. So many celery plants in here. I feel like a couple got to make it over winter. Well, I might do a couple sortings, just a real quick one now. Kind of looks good, but then you now you flip it over and it's kind of beige. That's not nice inside. That, that's gone. Consolidated down to that. Some nice looking celery in here though. I'm gonna wait to uh, chop the tops off. Usually I do chop them off in the garden. I'm just gonna leave this pile here for now. So we'll do a quick update here on the terrace garden. Beautiful land race. Moshata butternuts are growing here. Lots of fruits. Scallions popping up here. These little nubs. Plumpkins. Those are cuties. So the sunflowers, I think they're gonna make it just in time. They're gonna start blooming real soon here. All my squash did finally make it over all of this um, debris here where the second terrace hugel culture is going. It's just not covered up yet. Lots of fruits. Beauty. Whoa, there's a neat one. Look at that. Oh, that's so exciting. I love seeing all the different shapes and sizes. There's a long one. Look at those, gorgeous. Oh, a little bit of chomping there. We do have a bit of a mice problem. They're living in here to be expected, I suppose, with all this perfect habitat for mice. I'm um, glad it's just mice though, not really rats. So they haven't been really chewing them too much. They just put some poops on them. I try to wash them off. Oh, some little munches. I guess that is gonna affect my storage ability. That's too bad. Yeah, but there's quite a lot all over. Ooh, there's a big one. It's interesting, some are green. Oh, that could be a volunteer. These guys are blooming, these runner beans. And look at that, they're climbing some of the sunflowers. Red Vlant's kale is looking real good. There's a bunch in here. Yeah, so I also just throw some scrap lumber and boxes and whatnot that I have kicking around in the back of this hoogle here. So I've got a couple of these interesting green colored ones. They're really cool. Look, some, uh, Amaranth. Have a large blueberry in here. A volunteer squash that I left growing in my wicking barrel. And it has made a couple of fruits. My herb plant's doing pretty well. I do need to uh, prune the lower branches and nip out the buds though below so they fatten up a little bit. It's getting a little late for that. <laughs> I might just let it go.
September is such a celebration of garden abundance. So many beautiful colors. I feel so fortunate to be able to grow so much nourishing food. Hopefully I've inspired you, maybe added a little value and entertainment to your day. Remember, keep your heart inspired and keep on growing.